Welcome to the Botanical Gardens here in Antigua and Barbuda. And right now, as you can see, it's a little dry and only the strongest plants are thriving. I'm Patrice Martin, and this is another episode of the conservation series presented by the Department of Environment. Now, when fertile land becomes like a desert because of drought, deforestation, or inappropriate agricultural practices, it's called desertification. Now, on an island that is prone to all three, we must have a plan for our own survival. We'll hear more about those plans right on this very program. Stay with us. Fearing the destruction from the next storm or hurricane, we abandon our home and businesses because they are in low-lying areas. Our fishermen's nets and pots go empty for days and weeks. The fish we need to feed ourselves are dying or left due to loss of habitat. Constant droughts have left our ponds and reservoirs dry, leading to water shortages threatening our health and our food supply. We've already begun to take steps so together we can make a difference and create a sustainable nation for future generations. Planting a tree, reducing your driving by using public transportation, carpooling or switching to an electric car, using energy efficient bulbs and appliances are all things you could do to make a difference in limiting climate change. Remember, there's no planet B. Welcome back. In 1997, Antigua and Barbuda signed a formal agreement with the United Nations to tackle desertification. It just means that we have joined the global community in acknowledging the importance and linking the environment and development to sustainable land management. And the work continues. Drought is a recurrent feature for Antigua and Barbuda as a result of two things, climate change and human activities. With respect to climate change, changing weather conditions over the decades have caused global warming. And as a result of that, we have had great evaporation, which in turn stimulates adverse weather effects. We have low rainfall patterns, but we're going to have higher intensity rainfall events. With the high intensity rainfall events and the degradation that has taken place, we will not have the infiltration required for us to build our aquifers. We will have greater runoff and less infiltration. That degradation condition stimulates drought condition in Antigua and Barbuda. Coupled with that, our human activities such as deforestation, poor land management and land farming practices, poor animal husbandry has degraded our soil and affected its microclimates. When we put those two things together, we can already see a pattern of drought occurring in Antigua and Barbuda. Adaptation to drought means our survival, of course. So we have to look at environmental adaptation and our socioeconomic um, adaptation. If we adapt appropriately, to drought situations, we can see increased agricultural yield because we will have our soil being rebuilt. Adaptation means that significant financial resources for the country will be reduced because of the reduced dependence and pull on our desalination plants to produce water. It would help to reduce our energy consumption, therefore reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. 
necessary to produce that water and you will see why that is very important. Also the reduction in our source water, we have always known that our aquifers are overdrawn and we have saline intrusion and so once we have good recharge of our aquifers and manage our use, we will stem that overdrawing and stem the pollution and the loss of our aquifers. And finally, drought and the effect, which is desertification, contributes to conditions such as wildfires, which in fact then continues to degradate our soils. When farmers doing their um, agriculture work, they have a low volume of soil, so the crop more likely, you know, don't really give proper produce. So more likely they have to spend more money so they can have proper produce. So um, with, with drought, it makes it difficult for the farmers. Planting trees help to attract rainfall. Also, it helps to um, track the, the water, especially during drought. It helps to release the water back to the atmosphere, especially, uh, prime example, the Wallens Dam. It was built mainly to from whole water, but when we do the reforestation, it helps not only to track water, but it helps to serve for when it's drought, to help to serve water back to the farmers and other trees around the area. We have a number of uh, programs. Our, our Arbor in initiative helps us to give away a lot of plants for free. Also, our Plant to Tree campaign helps us to work along with different community groups and we also have programs within the schools that they propagate plants within the school sector. We also help with the reforestation with the waterway in Christian Valley and also Mackenzie Pond. Antigua and Barbuda ratified the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, or otherwise commonly known as the UNCCD. In doing this, we joined the global community in acknowledging the importance of linking environment and development to sustainable land management. This multilateral environmental agreement recognizes that desertification, land degradation, and drought are major global environmental and developmental concerns. Antigua and Barbados had our share of land degradation due to numerous factors, some of which include deforestation, unsustainable agricultural practices, poor soil and water conservation practices, introduction of invasive alien species, and inadequate development controls. These factors, though detrimental to the environment, can be avoided. They can be reduced or even reversed through collaborative efforts of key stakeholders. The push now is to promote sustainable land management practices through restoration, rehabilitation or reclamation measures. The country has embarked on several initiatives over the past and present to address and combat land degradation, some of which include ecological restoration through the transformation of areas overgrown with invasive species and replacing them with more climate resilient vegetation and some of which have commercial value. Instituting national wildfire prevention strategy and educating the public on proper forestry management techniques. Improving data and information availability on the local soil resources in the country by conducting soil surveys and storing the data in databases. Additionally, replanting of thousands of trees to restore degraded lands in affected areas is helping to increase the productivity of our watersheds. Goal 15 of the Sustainable Development Goals urges countries to protect, restore, promote sustainable uses of our terrestrial systems, sustainably manage our forests, combat desertification, and halt and reverse land degradation and halt biodiversity loss. We in Antigua and Barbuda echo the move towards land degradation neutral world. That is, to accomplish the state whereby the amount and quality of land resources remain stable or increase within a specific time frame. This is necessary to sustainably support ecosystems functions, services, while enhancing food security. We continue to urge our nationals and residents, including our farmers, to strive for a greener, more productive and more prosperous Antigua and Barbuda for all.
Department of Environment is proud to announce that it has successfully presented Antigua and Barbuda's sixth national report to the Secretariat for the Convention on Biological Diversity. As a signatory to the Convention on Biological Diversity, Antigua and Barbuda is required to submit national reports on our progress in the implementation of the objectives within the Convention. The most recent report outlines our progress in meeting the set national biodiversity targets which are based on the Global Aichi targets. These are a set of 20 global targets under the Strategic Plan for Biodiversity 2011-2020. to The sixth national report shows that we are making excellent headway in achieving these targets with 19 of 20 targets on track to be achieved by our set deadline. While we are pleased to have made great headway as detailed in the sixth national report, we will continue to improve our approach to biodiversity and commit to working with our stakeholders and the public to sustainably manage our biodiversity resources. The Department of Environment wishes to thank you for taking an interest in Antigua and Barbuda's progress and will continue to keep you informed. Remember, it is our responsibility to preserve our island's biodiversity today for the generations of tomorrow. Now this is the interactive part of the program and I'm so glad that you could join us on this conservation series presented by the Department of Environment. I'm Patrice Martin and with me we have Gregory Bailey, Acting Director of Agriculture in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Barbuda Affairs and we also have Joan Sampson, Project Coordinator within the Department of Environment. Glad that you both could be here with us today. Now this is an opportunity for our audience here to hear more from you, but I want to kick things off here today. I want to ask you a question of my very own. We're in a period of drought here in Antigua and Barbuda. Do you have any idea the cause of it? And is there any particular way that we can stop it? Yes, so drought is caused by many, many factors. Um, some of a human nature and some are natural environmental phenomena. Um, it generally exists by countries in a cycle and in Antigua and Barbuda we will, we will have a series cycles of drought throughout our history. Um, in terms of the factors, these vary from geographical location, from one geographical location to another. I think more important to us is the impact of drought and the parameters that we use to measure it. For example, the agricultural drought for example will take place way before the meteorological drought because the meteorological drought is dependent on rainfall below a particular threshold over a period of time in a given geographical area. Um, in terms of what we can do to mitigate against it, well, <laughs> when we say drought, we think straight to water, right? So the idea is to conserve, preserve, and um, utilize in a way that is sustainable. So in addition to what Gregory said about um, climate change as an uh, one of the cause and human factor and he mentioned what we can do with respect to the human intervention but as we look at long-term mitigation we also need to look at how we treat with our environment and things such as tree planting replanting to stop and stem land degradation um, to look at how we can bring back um, renew our microclimate in the soil to ensure that when we do get our rainfall that it's not runoff but we it is absorbed into the aquifer so we have to also look at our long-term impact um, on addressing drought. Thank you so much for that, Joan, and for you, to you, Gregory. I see that we have a question from the audience. Hi, so what support is the government providing local residents during these drought conditions? Okay, so from the perspective of the Department of the Environment, we have a number of projects uh, that are ongoing that are giving support to residents to address drought condition. Um, for instance, the Adaptation Fund project, um, which focuses on the McKinnon's Waterway. We have the Sustainable Climate Change Fund, SCCF, Building Climate Resilience to Innovative Financing Mechanism. We have our EDA project, and these projects are giving low interest 
revolving fund loan to persons to be able to adapt their homes to drought conditions. Um, we understand that a majority of the pop population might be might not be able to access regular financial institutions to get funding and by giving low interest loan uh, we are allowing a wider portion of the population to be able to get that funding. Some of the things that we are funding are um, water harvesting mechanisms, tank um, spouting. We are looking at the three R's, reuse, reduce and recycle. So we are allowing persons to outfit their homes so that they can reduce their consumption of water through like low flush toilets and efficient appliances. And we are also working with how we treat with the recycling portion, looking at your drainage mechanisms and training and teaching how we can recycle the water that we already use um, to water your plants, etc. So we are tackling all the R's in this project by allowing persons to access loan at the minimum. In addressing uh, the drought, the government through the Ministry of Agriculture has a, a few initiatives. Um, generally speaking, we concentrate on education and training of farmers through the extension division in terms of soil and water conservation measures. And this has a whole host of activities um, from the way you prepare the land to the way you plant and the way you apply nutrients and so forth. In addition to that, we, has, we have also embarked on a a dam construction initiative which we expect to construct uh, several dams around the island over the next few years and this will greatly help with our surface water catchment and hopefully reduce our dependence on reverse osmosis and hopefully another spin-off benefit could be contribution to wells because generally speaking when you have stagnant surface water it generally percolates better and stand a very high chance of recharging the wells. Hi, will planting more trees close to reservoirs help to improve drought conditions? That's a very good question. A very, a very good research question also. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I can answer a question like that in absolute terms. However, planting of trees does help in the long run in, in mitigating against drought through the impact of the, that plants generally have on the water cycle. So it's all about circulating water in the environment to the extent that you can to optimize the up and down movement if I can call it that. Um, they may be able to assist the reservoir if the trees are planted in a particular space in to reduce evapotranspiration but then again you have transpiration from the trees so it's difficult to say if just because they're by the reservoir that they could contribute to drought mitigation. I think trees generally contribute and yeah I, I, I would answer it that way. Hi. So how can farmers adapt agricultural practices to reduce land degradation and drought? Uh, we concentrate a lot on the techniques of soil and water conservation. So the idea is to retain as much moisture within the soil as possible and also to prevent erosion. So generally speaking, that's the, ge that's the general approach. For example, if you're on the hillside, we try to cultivate across the slopes, right? So that we reduce the impact of rainfall coming down the slopes, things of that nature. Um, in terms of degradation, we generally try to use integrated pest management as our approach. Well, an integrated production management, meaning we optimize all the inputs that we put into a crop. That's the general idea. So you don't over fertilize and you don't under fertilize. Things of that nature. If the soil doesn't need tilling, you don't till. You do no till cultivation, for example. So that is some of the ways we try to, to handle the environment under these conditions. When we look at drought also, we realize that one of the things we have been battling with um, is with respect to slash and burn practices. And slash and burn also degrades our soil. It, allow, it exposes the soil to erosion. And when we have that downpour, instead of having the percolation, we have um, heavy runoff and loss of water. So one of the things that we are looking at in terms of, of that is how do we deal with training the farmers as to methods of clearing the land without slashing and burning it, clearing mm -hmm. it. And also the impact of animal husbandry. There, there's a mixed science of, of animal husbandry. At first we were told that roaming cattle and animals degrades the soil. Mm -hmm. But in recent times studies have shown that if you have controlled grazing in large packs that it helps to preserve the soil. It helps um, when the animals trample the soil and they have the feces and the urine, the carbon goes in. It helps to cover the, the soil that is required um, through the trampling, but it's a controlled grazing where you allow them to graze to a certain portion and then you move your grazing pasture to another area. And they have proven in Africa in particular where we have had seen 
great turnaround in the reduction of land degradation through that methodology. There are a lot more um, activities that can be done that can be researched, but there's great opportunity for us to deal with farming practices and how we can reduce the impact of droughts. Well, we can't thank you enough for clarifying some of the issues regarding desertification and surrounding drought. It truly has been very insightful. We say thank you to our panel, Gregory Bailey and to Joan Sampson, for being here with us yet again. And thank you to our audience for joining us for another episode of the Conservation Series presented by the Department of Environment. I'm Patrice Martin. Until next time.